Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. King Solomon King Solomon was the famous biblical ruler who established the first temple in Jerusalem before the Babylonians destroyed it in the year 587 BC. Solomon is one of the most important figures in the Old Testament, also called the Hebrew Bible. He was the son of David, the very same David who defeated the giant Goliath. He ruled over ancient Israel, was extremely wealthy, and yet was also very wise. In fact, Solomon's wisdom was only surpassed by the wisdom of Jesus of Nazareth. In the Quran, Solomon is an Islamic prophet. Some religious sects even consider him a magician and an exorcist. And for the past 250 years, Solomon has been a great source of intrigue. For historians, understanding the truth of King Solomon has always been a difficult task. He was supposedly a great builder and was responsible for many building projects throughout the Near East. But according to Professor Tom Meyer from Bible Shasta College and Graduate School, there's little physical evidence of King Solomon's supposed great deeds. At least there was little physical evidence until some recent discoveries. Archaeologists found similar building features at the three sites of Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. These are the three cities which, according to the Bible, King Solomon raised at the same time he raised the first temple. The cities were built as major administrative centers along road junctions and a busy highway. Tom Meyer compared the three cities to New York, Chicago, and San Francisco, positioned along U.S. Highway 80. The similar building features show that someone built all three cities at around the same time. They appear to have been built during the reign of King Solomon which could prove the biblical accounts of Solomon's vast building projects. Number 9. The Pompeii Safe Something mysterious happened 2,000 years ago in a wealthy suburb of Pompeii. Just as Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD and covered the Italian city in molten rock and hot ash, a robbery took place. It happened as the eruption was ongoing and opportunistic thieves were trying to pillage what they could. In the 1980s, archaeologists came across an ancient house in Pompeii that contained two groups of bodies. One of the groups was decked out in fancy jewelry, and the other had nothing. Researchers then found an ancient safe, a kind of prehistoric strongbox used by ultra-rich citizens to safeguard their most precious belongings. Researchers are fairly certain that as Mount Vesuvius erupted, Thieves targeted the household of elite citizens in an attempt to steal their stuff. But before the thieves could make it out with the strongbox, both parties met their doom at the hands of the erupting volcano. It took many years for archaeologists to excavate, investigate, and restore the Pompeii safe. They now know it was the epitome of home security for ancient Rome. It had a four-stage locking mechanism and was so strong it was only broken because of one of the worst natural disasters in history. Another interesting thing is that researchers suggest the presence of such a safe could mean that crime was rampant across the city. Wealthy people were desperate to protect their goods. And now for number 8. But first, it's shout out time! I want to say a big thank you to Nora Gibson and Mr. Jeremy McAllister for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. We'd love to have you! Number 8. The Pharaoh's Box Archaeologists from the University of Warsaw recently discovered an ancient chest in Egypt from 3,500 years ago. They were exploring near the famous Hatshepsut Temple in Deir el-Bahari when they came across a stone chest hidden in a cavity underneath some rocks. The mysterious chest, which appears to have been hidden on purpose, looked like a totally ordinary stone. It was only because the archaeologists were well-trained that they differentiated the box from the rubble. It turned out to be a treasure chest containing several mysterious items wrapped in ancient linens. The team pulled out a goose skeleton, a goose egg, and a wooden casket holding an ibis egg wrapped in canvas. They then found another bundle beside the stone chest. This one contained a wooden box with the name of Pharaoh Thutmose II written on its side in hieroglyphs. So what does all this weirdness mean? What's with all the bird eggs? Professor Nowinski with the university believes these strange treasures were offerings to Thutmose II, who was the husband of Queen Hatshepsut. 
The professor also says the artifacts are suggestive of a nearby tomb, hopefully the tomb of Thutmosis II, which has never been found. Number 7. Aztec Carvings Mysterious carvings left behind by the ancient Aztecs were recently uncovered deep in the bowels of Mexico City. Inside a tunnel from the 17th century, archaeologists found drawings created from before the Spanish conquistadors arrived in Mexico. The ancient drawings and paintings in the tunnel were created by the Aztecs in the days when their cities were filled with beautiful temples, gruesome sacrifices, and tall pyramids. The tunnel was part of an unfinished dike system commissioned by the Aztec emperor Moctezuma I. The purpose of the dike system was to control flooding that frequently occurred because of the lakes surrounding the current capital of Mexico. But it wasn't long after construction started that Hernán Cortés arrived with his troops and began fighting the Aztec. The dike was abandoned, then later rebuilt in the 17th century by the Spanish. So, how did images drawn by the Aztec workers 300 years earlier make it onto the facade of the tunnel? It's all about repurposing. When the Spanish finished the dike system, they used repurposed stone with Aztec symbols and images drawn on them. Some of the images found in the tunnel include a war shield called a chimali, the head of a bird, and the flint point of a weapon. Number 6. The Temple of Kanum when a team of researchers with an Egyptian archaeological mission began to excavate the Temple of Khnum, they had no idea they were going to discover layers of history hidden beneath. The Temple of Khnum is located in the ancient Egyptian town of Esna, later called Latopolis by the Greeks. The temple was constructed by Ptolemy V, then later improved by the Romans. It was dedicated to Khnum, god of the source of the Nile. Within the temple, the team identified a calendar used to mark annual festivities, religious hymns scrawled on the walls, and what appeared to be images of crocodiles and rams. But the recent excavations revealed much more. The archaeologists found another building from the Roman era. It proved to be a bathhouse, a circular brick building made from sandstone. They were able to identify the remains of its original columns, which once formed a magnificent gated entrance. It looks like the bathhouse was fed by water flowing to the structure in shallow channels, and it even used a Roman heating system to turn the place into a sauna. The really weird part about all of this is that the Romans built their bathhouse directly connected to what should have been a sacred temple. It goes to show just how quickly something sacred can be turned into a glorified spa. Number 5. Goldsmith's Toolkit Archaeologists believe they have just discovered an ancient goldsmith's toolbox in a burial mound near Stonehenge. The supposed toolkit consists of a collection of very smooth stones, polished chunks of rock that were uncovered in the burial mound after 4,000 years. To ordinary people, these artifacts would look like nothing but rocks. But to keen-eyed archaeologists, these rocks were the trade tools of an ancient master goldsmith. But we should go back to the beginning. The alleged toolkit was uncovered in 1802 at the site of Stonehenge in England. But nobody knew what they were until now, when scientists were finally able to do a microscopic analysis of the rocks and primitive axes found two centuries ago. The analysis revealed small traces of gold, along with wear markings. This proves that they were used by someone to hammer raw gold into smooth sheets. But the discovery keeps getting better and better. The toolkit was discovered along with a deposit of pierced animal bones, which experts say were likely part of a shaman's ritual garb. What we're seeing here is the ancient landscape of Stonehenge coming to life. Buried in this mound were the tools of an expert craftsman and a tribal shaman from around 1850 BC. These were likely important members of the Wessex culture that flourished in small primitive villages near Stonehenge after it was finished. Number 4. Viking Boat Graves Archaeologists discovered a pair of Viking boat graves in a farmer's field in Norway. The find was a little unusual because the boats were twins both buried in the same Viking grave. Most Viking ship graves were made for just one person, usually someone extremely important like a chieftain. The most beloved and powerful members of society were buried inside of longboats, 
which to the Vikings were some of the most meaningful things in the world. But when researchers dug up this grave, they found two boats. One contained a man, and one contained a woman. Even weirder is that they were buried 100 years apart. The woman died in the 9th century and was buried with artifacts from Ireland likely acquired during a Viking raid. Underneath the woman, who has yet to be identified, was a man in his own boat buried in the 8th century. Archaeologists think the Vikings were reusing the burial mound, possibly because they didn't want to make a new one. It was a lot of work and a lot easier to just have one person inside the grave of another. As for who the man was, that's still a mystery. But based on the style of sword found in his grave, he may have been a Merovingian king. The Merovingians ruled huge parts of Western Europe in the Dark Ages. Either this guy was a king, or he somehow acquired one of their swords. Number 3. The Egyptian Commander A team of Czech archaeologists were conducting an excavation near the Giza Plateau when they unearthed the mysterious tomb of a long-dead Egyptian commander. The commander lived 2,500 years ago, during the late 26th or early 27th dynasty. This was right around the same time as King Solomon in Israel. Thanks to information discovered in his tomb, researchers were quick to learn not only his name, but many aspects of his life as well. His name was Wa'ib Ra Mary Nate, and he was the commander of a battalion formed entirely of foreign mercenaries. 2,500 years ago was the beginning of the first age of globalism in the ancient world. This was a time when people were just starting to travel vast distances on well-trodden trails, and people were moving from one to another. The Egyptian commander was in charge of one of the first groups of soldiers to represent Egypt in battle, even though they weren't Egyptian themselves. The commander's tomb was uncovered less than 8 miles from the pyramids of Giza. His tomb was made to be magnificent. It was found to have two levels, with the sole purpose of housing the commander's corpse. His body was hidden in a smaller shaft dug through the solid bedrock below the main shaft. When all was said and done, he was about 52 feet beneath the surface. This guy was very important, so much that they dug as deep as possible to ensure his soul would forever be at rest. Unfortunately, they didn't dig deep enough. Archaeologists confirmed that Wa'ib Ra Mary Nate's body was removed over 1,000 years ago by tomb raiders who had already broken in and stolen everything of value. Before we move on to number two, want some more discoveries? Stick around to watch an earlier video about incredible archaeological discoveries that you might have missed. Number 2. Ancient Projectiles Archaeologists from Oregon State University have discovered what they say are the oldest projectiles ever found in the Americas. They uncovered 13 projectile points, each one razor sharp and designed to kill. The tips of these points range from between 0.5 to 2 inches long and may have been used for either hunting or warfare. They were discovered alongside the Salmon River in Idaho and have been dated at 15,700 years old. That's according to the official Carbon-14 dating. It's amazing because that date places these projectiles as over 3,000 years older than other similar artifacts found in North America. Lauren Davis, the leader of the archaeological team, says the discovery is very important because it helps to understand the earliest people of America. Discovering such well-made artifacts proves that the first Americans were technologically advanced and capable of complex thinking. And here's where things get even more exciting. The 13 projectile points are nearly identical to similar points found in Hokkaido, Japan 20,000 years ago. It seems pretty obvious there is a connection here between the first North Americans and the people of East Asia. It's clear to researchers that people from prehistoric Japan fled across the Bering Land Bridge, bringing their primitive technologies with them to North America. Number 1. Neanderthal Necklace In a dark and spooky cave, researchers have found what they say could be one of the final remnants of Neanderthal creativity. The Forodada Cave in Spain is located near the coast of the Mediterranean, in the province of Valencia. It was here around 40,000 years ago. Neanderthals lived dim, gloomy lives in caverns and underground dwellings. 
It was also here where archaeologists excavated what could be the last necklace ever made by our distant ancestors. The necklace was made with eagle talons and likely had symbolic or even religious importance to whoever made it. Excavations have been going on in the cave since the 1970s, but it was only recently that scientists started to find the real treasure. They came across a complete Neanderthal skeleton, believed to be the most complete ever found in the area. This individual lived at the very end of Neanderthal existence in Europe. Around the same time, researchers found the piece of jewelry. It came as a huge shock because the symbolic behavior of Neanderthals is widely unknown. Some scholars speculate they were just as creative as us, even creating their own primitive religion. Other scholars don't think the Neanderthals participated in the same symbolic behavior as human beings. Now, the existence of this personal ornament proves that during the final days of the Neanderthal, they were shockingly similar to Homo sapiens. Which of these amazing archaeological wonders did you find the most fascinating? Let me know in the comments, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stick around for some extra archaeological discoveries! Number 8. Ancient Theater Bathroom Archaeologists have just discovered the remains of what appears to be a communal toilet at a 2,000-year-old theater in the ancient city of Smyrna. Located in modern-day Turkey, the bathroom was built in the 2nd century AD and remained in use until the 5th century. The shared commode is the first of its kind ever found within a stage building, according to a statement from the Izmir Metropolitan Municipality. Measuring 16 inches high, the U-shaped structure accommodated 12 to 13 people at a time. It was accompanied by a 3 to 4 inch trough for clean water. Experts believe that the latrine was reserved for actors rather than audience members. The theater contains a larger toilet that was open to the public. People who used the facility would have cleaned themselves with a shared sponge on a stick, which they rinsed off in the nearby trough of flowing water. In today's society, the idea of going to the bathroom in front of other people is appalling to most, but it was just a part of everyday life for the ancients, and it was even seen as a chance to socialize. After all, you might as well catch up while you're sitting there. Number 7. Egyptian Official's Tomb Ta M. Wea was an ancient Egyptian official who lived over 3,200 years ago. He wore several hats under Pharaoh Ramses II, including head of treasury and the chief supervisor of livestock. His job as the head of treasury was likely a bit different than it would be in modern times. During Ramses II's reign from 1279 to 1213 BC, minted coins didn't yet exist. Instead, people paid for things using goods, rations, and precious metals as currency. He had a pretty complicated and important job then, sorting and accounting for all of these items. Archaeologists recently discovered Time Wea's tomb at Saqqara, a vast necropolis that served as a burial ground for ancient Egypt's most elite figures. The burial contains artwork depicting people leading cattle and other animals to ritual slaughter. There are also engravings of a man, perhaps Ta Mbuya himself, sitting on a horn-like object near a collection of jars. Experts are working to decipher hieroglyphs found above some of the carvings. One of the inscriptions seems to convey that one of Ptah Mbuya's job duties was to make divine offerings at one of Ramses' many temples in Thebes. No human remains have been found in the burial so far, but the excavation is ongoing, and more discoveries may be waiting to be made. Number 6. Fraudulent Medieval Map The Vinland map made news headlines in 1965, when Yale University announced the discovery of the supposed medieval rendering of North America. Scholars claimed that it was one of the oldest maps of the continent, and cited it as evidence that Vikings reached the Western Atlantic during the 15th century. But many experts questioned the Vinland map's authenticity from the get-go. Its origins could only be traced as far back as 1957, when an antiques collector bought it from an unknown European source, and its ink crumbles in a way that's never been seen with medieval ink. The map also seemed suspiciously accurate for the time period it was attributed to. In 1973, a group of researchers declared the map a forgery, but many still wanted to believe it was real, and the debate raged on until recently. Yale experts have finally declared with certainty that the Vinland map is a fake. 
During a recent study, they found that the ink contains a titanium compound that didn't appear in ink until the 1920s, ruling out the possibility that it was as old as researchers originally thought. It's especially important to solve mysteries like this, according to Raymond Clemens, curator at Yale's Rare Book Library. Speaking with news outlets, he pointed out that fraudulent artifacts like the Vinland map soak up a lot of intellectual airspace. Clemens further explained that whoever created the map was very skilled, as evidenced by its ability to fool and confuse many talented scholars over the years. The map will remain in Yale's collection, despite being a proven forgery. In fact, the story behind it is what makes it a fascinating artifact in its own right. Number 5 a Roman battle site. During the 1st century BC, the Romans clashed with a local tribe in a remote part of southeastern Switzerland. Artifacts have turned up at the site over time, but until recently, the authorities believed that the site had been completely cleared of anything with archaeological value. They were recently proven wrong by Lucas Schmidt, a dentist who spends his spare time volunteering with his local archaeological association. Using his metal detector to scour the site for hidden artifacts, Schmidt found a 2,000-year-old Roman dagger. Speaking with reporters, he said that the metal detector's signal was faint, and he never would have guessed he'd encountered such a major find. Intrigued by the discovery, an archaeological team excavated the property and found hundreds of artifacts, including slingshot stones, coins, nails, and part of a shield. The findings mark the first time a Roman battlefield has been identified in Switzerland. Roman archaeology expert Peter Schwartz told SWI that he believes around 1,500 men participated in the fight, making it a small battle compared to some of the other skirmishes the Romans fought elsewhere in Europe. Researchers hope to narrow down the date of the battle to connect it to a decree that Roman Emperor Augustus issued in 15 BC to seize control of the region. No grave sites have been found, so nobody yet knows how many soldiers died in the battle. Excavations are ongoing and will hopefully yield more information about what exactly happened at the site. Number 4. Altar of the Serpent King In 2018, archaeologists discovered a carved stone altar in the ancient Maya city of La Corona. Dating back nearly 1,500 years, the piece was found deep in the jungle of northern Guatemala. It's the site's oldest recorded monument from the classic Maya period, which lasted from 250 to 900 AD. The limestone altar features carvings that tell the story of the Kanul dynasty, which began its 200-year rule by seizing power in the Maya lowlands region. They also detail the existence of a previously unknown king, according to La Corona Regional Archaeological Project Director Marcelo Canuto. Known as Chak Tuk y Chak, the ruler is depicted carrying a two-headed serpent. The inclusion of these animals makes perfect sense, since the Kanul dynasty rulers were known as the Snake Kings. The primary deities of the Kanul are also found intertwined with the snakes in the carvings. By studying the altar's carvings, Researchers are learning more about how Kanul leaders expanded their power during the dynasty's early days. So far, it's become clear that La Corona played a major role in the kingdom's formation. Number 3 oldest footprints in the Americas. The discovery of 23,000-year-old footprints in New Mexico's White Sands National Park has dialed back the earliest known human presence in North America by at least 10,000 years. The footprints were imprinted into an ancient lake bed over a several thousand-year period during what's known now as the last glacial maximum. It looks like children and teenagers walked along the shoreline before the glaciers of the last ice age melted. The discovery marks a turning point in the seemingly endless debate over who first stepped foot into the Americas and when. Some researchers argue that people reached the continent even earlier than the footprints were made. It's possible, but for now, evidence of these claims remains scarce. The fossilized footprints are a game-changer because their dating seems accurate, proving that people reached the continent during a time when researchers previously thought ice sheets blocked them from entering. For this reason, experts believed until recently that North America's first humans were a group known as the Clovis people, who arrived around 13,000 years ago. Now they face the question of not if someone arrived before the Clovis people, but who and when. Number 2. Medieval Propaganda Edward of Woodstock, better known as the Black Prince, became heir to the English throne when he was born in 1330. He went down in history for securing several victories in France during the Hundred Years' War, which led to the capture of French King Jean II. Oddly, nobody knows how the Black Prince got his nickname. 
which first appeared in the historical record during the 16th century. When he was dying from dysentery in 1376, he drew up a will dictating that he wanted his effigy to be made from metal and fully armed in plate of war. Researchers have said that this wish was unprecedented for its time. The Black Prince's father, King Edward III, died the following year. At just 10 years old, the Black Prince's oldest son, Richard II, rose to the throne. The Black Prince's effigy is made from the exact same materials as that of his father. New research points out that this suggests they were made by the same person at around the same time. Historical records show that marble for Edward III's tomb was transported to England by ship in 1386. At the time, Richard II had recently put down a peasant's revolt and was struggling to uphold his power. Records show that he was engaged in numerous projects to commemorate his family's legacy, perhaps as a way to assert his authority now that he was an adult. Consequently, the new study proposes that the Black Prince and Edward III's effigies were created around 1386 as medieval propaganda. Unfortunately for Richard II, his attempts at maintaining an upper hand over his subjects failed. He was deposed in 1399 at the hands of his own cousin, King Henry IV, and he died a year later. Number 1. Monte Prama Giants while plowing their field along Sardinia's west coast in 1974, farmers struck what they initially thought was a huge rock in the ground. It turned out to be a stone head, dating back to the Iron Age, and was the first of thousands of limestone fragments that archaeologists unearthed in the following decades. Put together, the pieces formed dozens of massive 3,000-year-old statues, measuring as much as 7 feet tall. Known as the Monte Prama Giants, each statue was carved from a single limestone block. They bear distinctive features, including triangular faces, T-shaped eyebrows and noses, and large round eyes made up of concentric circles. The giants hold different objects, including bows and shields. Researchers have categorized them into warriors, archers, and boxers. It's generally agreed that the Monte Prama giants had a symbolic power that unified the culture who created them, but nobody knows exactly what they represent. They are one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Scholars initially assumed that the statues were part of a Carthaginian temple, but they turned out to be much older than that. The statues were likely built by the Nuragic civilization, which flourished between the 18th and 8th centuries BC. Known for their expert metal and stoneworking, the culture built over 6,000 distinctive megalithic structures, or nuragi, throughout Sardinia. These, like the Monte Prama giants, are largely a mystery to archaeologists, and so are the reasons behind the nuragic civilization's mysterious decline. Thanks for watching! Would you like to learn about more incredible archaeological discoveries? You've come to the right place! So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and check out some more of our videos! See you next time! Bye!